Next speaker will be Mateus Amarques from UFPB in Brazil. I believe it's the University of Paraíba. And he will be talking on new results on magnetic monopoles. So um, please, Mateus, whenever you, you think, whenever you, you want, you can go. Okay, thank you, Advia, for the introduction and thank, thank the, the organizing committee for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. And today I'm going to talk about some new results that we have obtained in the latter years on magnetic monopoles. I hope everyone is fine in this pandemic. So let's start. I'll start with some motivation for our work. We are going to work with monopoles, but our motivation came from other structures. Uh, the, the first one, was this work by Edward Witten on superconducting strings. He considered the addition of an extra U1 symmetry, okay, to accommodate fields that provided the superconducting feature on the, the strings. Another motivation came from this paper from Paola Arias and Fidel Chaposnik. And they studied vortex solutions of an abelian Higgs model with visible and hidden sectors. In this case, uh, both sectors were associated, each one actually, to a symmetry. So we had in this paper, they, they introduced the extra symmetry to accommodate fields to account the so-called hidden sector, which is of interest in the, in the study of uh, dark matter, right? This was a motivation for us. Even though the symmetry is there, are you one, and we are going to work with SU2, since monopoles are rising, SU2 symmetries, but these are motivations, the enlargement of symmetries the idea of enlarge the symmetries that we are going to use came from those works, essentially. Another motivation came from this paper, which is actually a, a super symmetric extension of the previous one, okay? And we, they also had a, a hidden sector, so an extra U1 symmetry to account for the sector, okay? But we are going to work with monopoles, so we, are, we will deal with SU2 symmetry. Another motivation, uh, but in the curved space-time, was this paper from Kim Yong Lee, Mayer, and Weinberg. And they have taken magnetic monopoles to the curved space-time and find black holes in them. So this, this is a motivation and maybe also a perspective, okay? Because we are going to, to deal with novel structures here and one may investigate them in, in the context of black holes. And the most pragmatic motivation is people are searching for magnetic monopoles. This, has been of interest since the, their proposal. And today we have the Moido collaboration that uh, is searching for them, okay? So our goal here is to modify the toft polyakov model to add internal structure and find novel features in the monopoles. Before getting to the novel models, I will reveal the basics of monopoles, which is essentially given by the toft polyakov papers, okay? And they arise in the, with this action. So we have an electromagnetic strength tensor here. We have the covariant derivatives and the potential. The definition of the 
the covariant derivative in the electromagnetic tensor uh, must obey the SU2 symmetry, okay? They, they have this form due to the SU2 symmetry. So we have these extra terms here. Uh, this model supports these two equations of motion. Notes they are of second order, right, in general. And since the Lagrange density is invariant of over space-time translations, we got this energy moment from tensor. In two study monopoles, we consider static configuration and the fields given in this form. Of course, since we are we want more magnetic monopoles, we are taking the temporal component of the gauge field to be new. Right? And now the, the fields must be given essentially by the two functions, h of r and k of r. In this case, there are that equations of motion get this form. And the, the potential appears here and may introduce nonlinearities to the model. Okay. So these equations are intricate to be solved. To, to get a simple form, to get to simplify the problem, we can use the Bogomoni trick. And then the energy density can be written as a sum of squares and a surface term. Okay. By minimizing the energy, okay, we get these two first order equations. The condition to for this to happen is to have the new potential, okay, and the energy is given by four pi. Notice that here we have no freedom of choice, so there is only as a function h and a function k that satisfy this this equation all right and they have analytic solutions given by those expressions so despite even though we are dealing with an intricate model we have analytical solutions and here sorry here i plot them in the left panel, the increasing ones, the increasing line R stands for the, the function H of R, and the decreasing one stands for the function K of R. And here you can see the boundary conditions. Okay, at the origin, H must be zero. This, this is due to the definiteness of the energy, all right? And asymptotically, H goes to one. The behavior of K is it's quite the opposite. It starts at one at the center of the monopole and then decreases towards zero. Okay. Well, these solutions give rise to an energy density with this profile, right? And since we have a three-dimensional structure. Um, we can plot the, the planar section passing through the center of the structure to get this, this figure here in the right. Okay, so the monopole is essentially a structure like a ball, right? Our goal is to modify the model and get monopoles with an internal structure here, okay? However, as I have said before, the, the first order equations in this form, in this model, the toft polyakov model, only supports the solutions. So we have to modify the model. And this was done in this paper in collaboration with Dionysio Bazet and Gonzalo, that everyone knows here. Uh, and in this paper, we have considered the Lagrange density similar 
to the Toast Polyakov ones, but we introduced two functions to modify the kinetic terms of the fields, right? So we hope that those functions may give us some freedom to modify the, the standard Toast Polyakov monopole. Okay, in this case, the equations of motion are going to be more complicated since there are the functions P and M included, all right? But in the case when P is equal to one over M, the energy density can be written as a sum of squares and a surface term in the energy. So we can do the Bobo-Moni trick here. It also appears, it also happens for V equal to zero, okay? And now we have these two first order equations. As before, the solutions of these equations lead to minimal energy configurations and the energy is the very same of the toft polyakov monopole, all right? Note that now we have the function P here in both equations to give us some freedom and modify the, the profiles of H and K. However, we must be careful because P appears in the numerator of the, the upper equation and in the denominator of the lower equation. So we may have problems depending on the behavior of P. Then what did we do? We considered the simplest case that we could think of, which was P being a power law function, okay? And then studying the behavior of the, the, the solutions near the origin to find each powers are possible which powers are, are, are admitted by the system, all right? I won't bother you with the, this, the mathematics in it. Rather, I prefer to show you the, the interesting cases that arise. And the first one is this. We have considered a, a linear contribution in P, okay? And surprisingly, we have obtained analytical solutions, right? This EI, this function EI is the exponential integral function, okay? So K of R is just an exponential, right? I have plotted these solutions in this left panel, so you can see. And the behavior, the, the global behavior is similar to the toft polyakov one. But note that the function k of r decreases rapidly towards zero, okay? And this reflects in the energy density. So now the energy density decreases very fast, all right? And by plotting the planar section, we obtain this figure here. So we can see it's a very small structure compared to the, the Toft Polyakov ones, right? And it is very concentrated around the origin, okay? So due to this, we have called this structure small monopole, okay? The, the, the fall off is exponential. It's a bit different from the, the Toft Polyakov ones, all right? So th this is the, the simplest case that we could thought, all right? But there is another one that is possible too, and it's given by this P. Of course, there are other powers that you can take to obtain uh, uh, similar results, okay? In this case, we have to solve these two first order equations, all right? 
but the solutions are not analytical. However, we can use numerical procedures and obtain these solutions. Note that now, near the origin, the function k almost it's almost a plateau here, right? So it almost doesn't increase near the origin, okay? And this reflects in the energy density as a whole at r equal to zero, right? So uh, it, it is zero, it increases and then goes asymptotically to zero. By plotting this energy density in the in the plane, in the, in actually the planar section, we have obtained this profile. Okay, so the monopole now has a hole at its center. So it's zero, and then it exists, and then it uh, slowly falls off. Okay. And due to this feature, we have called this a whole monopole, all right? So we have found two novel possibilities of monopoles, the small one and the hollow one. And inspired by those, those, those papers of Chaposnik and et al., Chaposnik and the other authors, we have thought, oh, we could use these structures to enlarge the symmetry of the model and try to accommodate two monopoles, one inside of another, you can say, all right? And we did this in this paper, okay? Biomagnetic monopoles. This was done with Dionysio Bazea and Roberto Menezes. Both are from UFPB. So how, what is the model in this case? We have the, the usual fields, okay? So we have an SU2 symmetry and we consider the inclusion of another SU2 symmetry to accommodate the fields that I've called the calligraphic A and the chi field, right? However, note that the functions P and M and the calligraphic P and calligraphic M depend only on chi, okay? So we are including a, 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 an extra sector in the Lagrange density to control the functions that modify the dynamics of our model. Okay, of course, the potential in general depends on uh, phi and chi, right? Okay, the, the normal letters stand for the sector for the usual way, and the calligraphic ones stand for the calligraphic A, okay? We will, we will we use this notation. Then we use the ansatz, the, the similar ansatz for the hidden sector, the, not the hidden, uh, the, the extra sector, the extra sector, okay? Uh, and now we have a calligraphic H of R and a calligraphic K, right? I won't do the, the Bogomoni trick here but it can be done, all right? This is in the paper. And by doing so, we find first order equations that minimize the energy of the system, okay? In this case, we have four functions to determine and then four first order equations, okay? But uh, we can think of them as pairs. So we have this pair inside this green box and the other pair. Note that the, the, the equations inside the green box do not depend on the non-calligraphic functions. 
right? So, in this sense, the sectors decouple, okay? And these equations can be solved independently. So, by solving them, I can find the profile of the calligraphic H and the calligraphic K, okay? They do not depend on H of R and K of R. And then use the function calligraphic H, calligraphic H, to feed this function P, right? And modify the profile of H and K. So it's like a, a, a structure, a sector is a source for the other one, right? And this gives us novel possibilities. Uh, and we have to be careful here too, because we, we have P in the denominator of, a, an, of an equation and in the numerator of the other one, okay? But it's something feasible and this leads us to which we have called the bimagnetic monopoles. Uh, in the last panel, we have considered a, a standard toft polyakov monopole in the center, okay? with a shell on it, okay? This shell is the hollow monopole, okay? So we have a composite structure here. And another possibility is the, the two shell monopole that we, we have able to do, okay? So th this is done by considering two hollow monopoles, all right? But we have to be careful because since these are given by P, uh, the, the, the functions that lead to this, to this configuration must be treated with care, all right? So these are the novel structures that I, that I wanted to talk about, all right? And there are still questions so. Okay, the collective behavior of these composite structures, for instance, is of interest. Uh, since the, the monopoles have a hole at its center, one can study them in the curved space-time to see how the black holes obtained by, by Weinberg and the other authors could behave here. Okay, Th those are open questions, right? Okay, this work supported by FAPESC and CNPQ, and obrigado. Thank you very much, Matheus, for this nice talk.